Several recent research has shown that post-meal blood glucose or PPG levels are a more significant predictor of cardiovascular events than HbA1c levels, especially in individuals with type 2 diabetes. This finding is crucial because it shifts the focus from traditional measures of long-term blood sugar control, like HbA1c, to the immediate spikes in blood sugar that occur after meals. My name is Sam, and I've been living with diabetes type 2 for over 40 years. I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1984. I have been controlling blood sugar and A1C under the supervision of doctors since then, but, sadly, I got a heart attack or to be exact an angina attack in 1993. I had to undergo a triple bypass surgery to correct the blockage, which was severe. That is despite the best control with regular HbA1c monitoring. Now, several new research articles highlight the importance of the after-meal blood sugar more than the HbA1c. That is what I am going to discuss in this video. HbA1c is easy for doctors as they just can say the words, good, or bad, while not considering the more important points of probably hypo events or low blood sugar events and high blood sugar events which damage most of the other organs in the body. Today, I want to share some important information about blood sugar, especially what happens after we eat, called postprandial blood sugar. This might sound a bit complicated, but don't worry, I'll explain it in a way that's easy to understand. What happens to blood sugar after eating? When we eat, our body quickly breaks down food, mainly carbohydrates, into glucose. Glucose is a type of sugar. This sugar enters our bloodstream and gives us energy. But, if you have diabetes, your body has trouble managing this sugar. This can cause your blood sugar levels to spike, or go really high, after meals. These spikes are called postprandial blood sugar spikes. Why are these blood sugar spikes important? You might wonder, why should we care about these spikes? Well, research shows that these post-meal spikes can be more harmful than just having moderately high blood sugar all the time. They can increase the risk of heart disease, which is a big problem for people with diabetes. So, it's really important to keep an eye on our blood sugar levels after we eat. Research, such as the San Luigi Gonzaga Diabetes Research, have demonstrated that post-meal blood sugar is a stronger predictor of cardiovascular events compared to fasting blood glucose and HbA1c, particularly in women. Another research published in Scientific Reports supports this, indicating that post-meal blood sugar outweighs fasting blood glucose and HbA1c in screening for coronary heart disease. Elevated post-meal blood sugar levels have been linked to an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. This is because high post-meal blood sugar can lead to oxidative stress and inflammation, which are key factors in the development of cardiovascular complications. Research links are in the description page of the video and your comments on your experiences are welcome. Wait there is more, but do not forget to hit the like button, if you have found this video useful. The surprising truth about blood sugar tests. Most of us know about the common blood sugar tests, like fasting blood sugar and HbA1c. Fasting blood sugar is measured after not eating for a while, and HbA1c gives an average of our blood sugar levels over a few months. But, did you know that these tests might not be enough? Research has found that postprandial blood sugar levels are actually better at predicting heart disease risk than these other tests. A systematic review and meta-analysis have shown that while HbA1c is a useful marker for long-term glycemic control, but, it does not capture the short-term fluctuations in blood sugar that can be harmful to other organs including the kidney, heart, eyes and nerves. PPG or post-meal blood sugar provides a more immediate measure of how well blood sugar levels are being managed after meals. Clinical Implications These findings suggest that monitoring and managing post-meal blood sugar should be a priority in diabetes care. This could involve dietary adjustments, medications that specifically target post-meal blood sugar spikes, and lifestyle changes to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events. How high is too high? 
So, what should our blood sugar levels be after we eat? For people without diabetes, a normal postprandial blood sugar level is below 140 mg per deciliter. If it's between 140 and 199 mg per deciliter, it might mean prediabetes. And if it's 200 mg per deciliter or higher, it could indicate diabetes. But remember, it's always best to talk to your doctor about your specific targets. While HbA1c is a good indicator of overall blood sugar control, it doesn't differentiate between fasting and postprandial blood sugar levels. This means it might miss the harmful effects of post-meal spikes. My personal tips for managing blood sugar spikes. Over the years, I've learned a few tricks to help manage my blood sugar levels after meals. Here are some tips that might help you too. Eat balanced meals. Try to include a mix of proteins, fats, and low-carbohydrate foods in your meals. This can help slow down the absorption of sugar into your bloodstream. Avoid things which have more than 50% carbohydrates and not enough fiber. Rice, wheat, potatoes and other high carbohydrates foods to be minimized and avoided altogether. If you can't keep your after meal blood sugar under 180 as in the American system or under 10 in the Australian system. Watch your portions, eating too much at once can cause big spikes in blood sugar. Try to eat smaller, more frequent meals instead. Stay active, physical activity can help lower your blood sugar levels. Even a short walk after meals can make a big difference. Monitor your levels, keep track of your blood sugar levels after meals. This can help you understand how different foods affect you and make better choices. Diabetes management and new medications. There's some exciting research happening in the world of diabetes management. Scientists are looking into new treatments that can help reduce these postprandial spikes without causing low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. One promising option is a type of medication called SGLT2 inhibitors. These drugs help the body get rid of excess sugar through urine. But, more research is needed to see how well they work in the long run. Technology is also playing a big role in managing diabetes. Continuous glucose monitors, CGMs, can track your blood sugar levels throughout the day and night. This can give you a better picture of how your blood sugar changes and help you make more informed decisions about your diet and medication. My hope for the future. Living with diabetes can be challenging but it's important to stay hopeful. With new research and technology, we're getting closer to better ways to manage this condition. My hope is that one day, we can all live healthier, happier lives without the constant worry of blood sugar spikes. If you've been recently diagnosed with diabetes, I know it can feel overwhelming. But remember, you're not alone. There are many resources and treatments available to help you manage your condition. Keep learning, stay active, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Together, we can take control of our health and live our best lives. While HbA1c remains an important marker for long-term blood sugar control, postprandial blood glucose levels offer critical insights into cardiovascular risk and should be closely monitored in individuals with diabetes. It is easy to do if you have a glucose meter at home. Even if you don't have that, it is cheap to test after meal blood sugar at most of the clinics or laboratories. Given the evidence, it is crucial to monitor and manage post-meal blood sugar levels to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events. This can involve dietary adjustments, medications that specifically target post-meal blood sugar spikes, and lifestyle changes. I hope this information helps you on your journey with diabetes. Stay strong and take care. Do not forget to click the like button and subscribe. Up, above you see a video related to diabetes and health. 
Thanks very much for watching this video.